In this tutorial, we'll be going over how you can fill between paths using Inkscape. And to show you what I mean, I have this series of individual lines on my screen here. If I grab my nodes tool, you can see these are just independent paths. And if I select all of these paths and try to apply a fill color, you can see that nothing happens there because these shapes between these paths aren't actually shapes. This is just empty space that takes on the appearance of a shape. So if I want to fill in these spaces, we have to use a different approach. So there's actually several different ways that you can do this, and the method that you should use depends on which result you're going for. So let's have a closer look. If I select all of these shapes right here, I can go to Path and choose Fracture, and what happens is it creates independent shapes out of all of those empty spaces there, and now you can just select them and go and change their colors as you'd like. Another way that you can do this is by using the Shape Builder tool. If I select all of these shapes and go into the Shape Builder tool, I can get the same result as Fracture. The only difference now is that I can make, I can combine some of these shapes together so I can create this cube-like effect like that. Now the problem with using this approach is that it doesn't just fill in those empty spaces. It also gets rid of the, uh, the lines that I had there. So if you want to do this in such a way that you can fill between these paths and still preserve these paths, one way to do that would be to use the Paint Bucket tool. So I'm going to come over here and grab the Paint Bucket tool in the, in the toolbar. You can also access it by pressing the letter U on your keyboard. And we'll come up here to the Tool Settings menu and make sure you have the Fill By set to Visible Colors. Make sure your threshold is set to 50. We'll start out at 50, and if we need to adjust it, we'll increase or decrease it. Grow and shrink, make sure you have that set to zero, and close gaps set to none. Now you can choose a fill color that you'd like to use. It's indicated up here in the top right corner. You can see as of right now, green is my fill color. If I want to change my fill color, I could just come down here to the color bar and pick one of these other colors. And now, if I click on one of these empty spaces, it fills in that empty space with the new vector shape. Now, if I zoom in on this, you can see where this effect is not perfect. You can see there are a little bit of gaps in there. It didn't exactly fill it in precisely. So let me undo that by pressing Control Z or Command Z if you're on Mac. And I'm gonna come up here to the tool settings. What we can choose to do is we can choose to grow or shrink the fill using this setting right here. So if I increase this to 0.7 and try that again, you can see it fills it in better as you can see there. But the problem now is that it's overlapping some of the path here. So what you'll want to do is grab your select tool and then just lower this beneath the paths like that. And now you can grab the paint bucket tool again and proceed to fill in the other colors. Now, if you want to change colors while you're filling them in, make sure to press the escape key so you can deselect whatever object you currently have selected. And then you can choose your next color like that and then press escape when you want to choose another color again, and then you could fill it like that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of my shapes here, I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to send them all to the back so that we can see the paths on top of them. And you can see, again, this approach is not perfect. We have these gaps in here despite, using, uh, despite changing those settings. So I'm going to grab my nodes tool, and I'm going to take these nodes and move them and adjust them so that everything here is filled in accurately. And there we go. So one thing to keep in mind when using the paint bucket tool is if I fill in this shape right here, I have a shape, but if I try doing that over here, it doesn't work. And the reason why is because if I zoom in, you can see there is a gap between these paths here, meaning this is all open space. The paint bucket tool mostly only works on closed spaces. There are no gaps here, so it worked over here. There is a setting that you can use to change this though. So if I come up here to the tool settings where it says close gaps, I can start off with small and see if that works. So I'll set it to small and click on it. Okay, so this, is, this must be larger than what Inkscape considers to be a small gap. So I'm going to try medium now because that didn't work. So let's try medium. There we go. And this time it works. So based on the size of the, of the gaps between your paths, go ahead and cycle through those options there to see if one of those will work if you're encountering that problem. So all of the methods that we've gone over at this point have been imperfect in some way. Let's go over a workflow that is perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select my paths here, and I'm going to combine them together by going to 
path and selecting combine. Now I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to right click it and go to duplicate. And now I'm going to apply the fracture to this duplicated path here. So I'll go to path and select fracture. And now I could change the colors of my shapes and I could remove the stroke by holding shift and clicking on this red X over here. And now I could send them to the back. And this workflow right here gives you the best result. The only problem with this method here is that now you have to go and change all of these colors individually if you need the colors to be different. So that is how you can go about filling between paths using Inkscape. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.